Hello and welcome. I don't know how much you know about OpenAI or ChatGPT, but they just released custom GPTs where you can upload some data, give it some instructions and get tailored information. So naturally I wanted to try it out and I created the Data Draft Fantasy Hockey GPT. In this video, I'll show you where to find it, how to use it and a few different use cases so that you can make better decisions in fantasy hockey. Before we get into anything else, this is definitely not going to be a perfect tool. You will need to be mindful in how you prompt the GPT and you may need to have uh, ChatGPT Plus. Now it's worked for some of our Discord members, but not for others, and this is beyond my control. So first, let's look at how to find this. Now I believe in the future there will be a GPT store where you can search for this, but until then, I'll leave a link in the description so that you can access it. And when you act, click on that link in the description, it will bring you to this page. So this is the landing page you'll be brought to. Uh, using this AI tool, there's a number of things that you can start off with, and I'll get to those in just a second, but some of the data that I've used to upload to this uh, includes the weekly schedule um, data sheet that I use, which has a couple of different pieces of information about which teams play the most and whatnot, so you can ask weekly questions. I've also added the data that I use to populate the player and goalie hubs, so all of that information will be here, and I'll try to keep on top of uploading that to this GPT on a weekly basis. And then I also have the uh, three-year average sheet that I was using in the preseason for the draft uh, analysis stuff that we were doing. So you can get some historical data as well. Now, what I assume that the majority of your questions are going to be will be about replacing a player who's underperforming or injured, evaluating a trade, evaluating your team versus your opponent's team, suggesting a player to add for the upcoming week based on the schedule, and nightly start and sit recommendations. So because of that, I've added instructions for each of those things. Now, you can start with some of these prompts right at the top. So for example, for start and sit recommendations, you click this button and it's just gonna walk you through. Uh, now it understands that that's what you're looking for. And then you can type in uh, a little, you know, whatever you're trying to find in terms of start or sit, you know, this player versus that player. So let's start with an example. So this was a request earlier from one of the Discord members. Should I start Atkinson versus Vegas or Jarvis versus Pittsburgh? So it understands that you're talking about Cam Atkinson and Seth Jarvis, but sometimes you might have to specify and be a little bit more clear in terms of the teams that they're playing against or their full names. Now, it first goes and fetches their per game metrics, goals per game, assists, shots, hits, blocks, and power play points, all the stuff that we look at on the Data Draft channel, and it gives you both for each player. So... This shows you side by side which player you would particularly want for which metric. So if you're looking for a goal scorer as opposed to an assist heavy guy, maybe you'd go with Atkinson. If you're looking for more hits, maybe you would go with Seth Jarvis. And it kind of analysis, uh, gives you an analysis based on that. So Atkinson has a higher goal per game and shot per game, indicating he might have greater impact on goal scoring and shooting categories. However, Jarvis is more consistent in assists and power play. So it then prompts you to say, uh, you know, Based on the strength of the opposing teams, Vegas and Pittsburgh are both competitive. That could impact your choice. Also, consider what categories you need to strengthen your lineup for this matchup. So if you want to drill down, then you can start by saying, uh, how does each of these players perform against these teams? So I said, search the internet to find the last five games that Jarvis has played versus Pitt and Atkinson versus Vegas. Now, sometimes it may not find anything. Sometimes the search feature just has been a little bit wonky and hasn't performed, but every now and then it does perform and it gives you exactly what you want. So Seth Jarvis is not that successful against Pittsburgh. Cam Atkinson seems to be a little bit more successful against Vegas. And then it gives you some analysis at the bottom. Atkinson has been more productive in terms of goals against Vegas compared to Jarvis against the Penguins. While both players showed very performance across these matchups, Atkinson seems to have a slightly better scoring record. So when you combine that with what it said up here, it kind of is suggesting that you pick up Cam Atkinson for specifically goals and shots. Now, if you just need assists and power play points, maybe you go Jarvis still. But this is giving you uh, pretty much what you need and what I look for when I'm looking in terms of start and sit operations, trying to find what the player's good at and then how they've performed against the team they're playing against today. So what are some other things you can do with this? So one thing I get a lot is trade evaluation. So I thought we'd try one of those out. So this is something that was uh, offered up in the Discord group today. Someone said, I'm trading away Tristan Jari and Josh Norris and receiving Connor Bedard. What do you think? So then it tries to evaluate. So it starts to look at their performance uh, down here. It took, took a little bit of prompting. So it said, you know, would you like me to delve deeper? Because it didn't provide any real statistics. So I said, yes, dive deeper. 
So great, we'll dive deeper into the specifics and now it gives us some stats. So 10 games played, five wins, 2.2 goals against, 920 save percentage, three shutouts, a 78 rating. Tristan Jari is off to a pretty good start right now, though he does battle injury issues. But uh, right now he's playing for a pretty good defensive team, 69.7 percentile in the league, 2.99 goals against per game expected. Josh Norris playing pretty well as well, nine points in 11 games. It gives you all the stats and the percentiles so you can see what he's good at and what you might probably favor him for and his completeness rating. And then it gives you the analysis. Jari's performing well this season, especially in terms of wins, goals against, and save percentage. Uh, Josh Norris has shown strength in goals per game and power play points, indicating that he's a valued contributor. Given these statistics, you are trading away a top performing goalie and a solid scoring forward. Connor Bedard, on the other hand, is a high potential prospect, but his impact is yet to be seen in the NHL. That's a little iffy. He's still pretty uh, impactful at a point per game this year and high shot volume. But this trade could be seen as a long term investment, but it might impact your team's immediate performance in goaltending. So that's pretty close to what I would have said. Yes, if you want Connor Bedard, uh, you could potentially you know, get some more shot volume and it didn't end up actually pulling Bedard's stats. Uh, so that is another, you know, this is going to be a little bit wonky. This is relatively new. So there are going to be some bugs to fix with this. But when you pair this with the player hub, you can get pretty much everything you need. So let's pair this with the player hub right now and just go look at Connor Bedard really quick. So when we look at Bedard, his goal scoring is really, really good. Nine goals over 13 games. So you're getting really good goal production and he is a point per game player and the shot volume is really good. So he is pretty comparable with a guy like Josh Norris. So let's pull up Norris's uh, file just to be clear in what we're getting here. Norris has been that good goal scoring in the past, but he's not as good this year. So it would actually be an improvement in shots, goals, and point per game, and some other metrics. Now, Norris does have the power play advantage, half a power play point per game over you know Bedard, a little bit lower than that. And you're not getting the good team exposure with Bedard, whereas you would get that with Norris. So this is just a little bit more detail. But ChatGPT got us most of the way there. And you are giving up two really good players for one player who's an up-and-coming guy who isn't necessarily going to have the consistency that some veteran players might have. So ChatGPT did a pretty decent job here, although there were some things that you had to fill in on your own. Now, another thing you can do is use this to analyze the schedule. So all I said was next week is week seven. What teams have the best schedules? So it looks in the file uh, for the weekly schedule and it pulls out the correct answer. So these are the teams that have advantageous schedules playing four games next week. Nashville, San Jose, Boston, Colorado, Calgary, Rangers, Edmonton, and Vancouver. So we'll get into that tomorrow in the weekly video. If you're watching this after tomorrow, then this was the correct answer for that question. Then I say, can you recommend some top players from those teams that I may be able to pick up off the waiver wire? But I had to specify this means that most of the good players will already be owned. And it actually does a pretty decent job. So it first identifies those teams. Then it starts to analyze, looking at certain metrics, goals per game, assists per game, shots per game, etc. And then it starts recommending some players. So Ilya Mikheyev, he's probably available in a bunch of different leagues. His goal per game number is pretty good, just under uh, half a goal per game. Shots are okay. Assists are a little bit low, but... That's what you're getting in terms of some guys off the waiver wire. Mason Lorai, he's a rookie coming out of Boston. They're playing really well. These numbers are a little bit low, uh, especially the shots per game. So I don't know if he'd be the best option. Ryan Johansson's a pretty good option. He's about uh, a goal every three games or so, 2.2 uh, shots per game. And he's getting some power play time, which it didn't necessarily identify. And it's right now just looking at three metrics. So again, not perfect, but it is giving you a couple different options that you can look for off the waiver wire. You have Matt Grizzlick, who's going to be more of a hits and blocks type of specialist. So this isn't necessarily as accurate. Same thing with DeHarnay. He's more of a hitter. Uh, and then you do have some other guys like Mangiapane, who's a relatively good goal scorer. Uh, you also have some other guys down here. Pew Suter has been playing pretty well lately. But it didn't necessarily give you the best options, though it did give you some options that are available probably on your waiver wire. Now, when I tried to do this again, it started to just give us the best players from those teams based on completeness rating. So... Obviously, the Vancouver Canucks are very, uh, you know, at the top of the leaderboard right now. McAvoy is one of the most complete defensemen. Same with Marshand. Uh, Pasternak's very complete as well. Philip Forsberg's having a good season. You still have 
Connor McDavid there, Hyman, but these are the guys that are probably going to be owned up. So it did a relatively good job at finding some other players that aren't these guys, but it didn't necessarily do the best job. So it'll get you most of the way there. You will have to do some digging on your own, but it can help you with some of those other things that we went over in the past, start and sit operations uh, in terms of you know who's going to get into your lineup on a weekly uh, or nightly basis. And then it can also uh, provide you with some trade recommendations as well. Now, there is one other thing that I haven't tried yet, so we'll try it here on the fly, and that is comparing your team to your opponent's team. So first, I click the prompt to compare your team versus your opponent, copy and paste each of your rosters with correct labeling. I wasn't able to copy and paste, so I had to manually type them out, which was a little bit of a pain, but it's not the end of the world. So I just typed in my team, each player, and then the goalies at the bottom right down here. I have my opponent's team his players, his goalies, and then I specify this is a head-to-head -head categories league with the specific categories that we play with. Then it comes in and says, okay, here's the methodology I'll use for that. Here's the skater categories. Here's the goalie categories, your team's analysis. So here's the defensemen, here's the forwards, here's the goalies. So it automatically detected the forwards, the D, uh, and then it starts by analyzing some of the criteria that we've uh, established. So as it's doing this, it's looking like, okay, it it, each of these players is going to be evaluated. JT Miller, strong in goals, assists, power play, shots, also contributes in hits and blocks, meaning he's very complete. And it gives you a breakdown of each player. Then it gives you an analysis of your opponent's team and uh, overall comparison. So both teams are strong with your team having slightly more depth in goal scoring and your opponent having a slight edge in assists. And then for shots and power play, my team has strong shooters like Forsberg, Caulfield, but your opponent has strong power play contributors like Hughes and McCarr, which is true, and Hughes is back. Uh, physicality, so hits and blocks. You have players like Wilson and Darlene contributing, but your opponent has solid contributors like McCabe and Jekai. Now let's analyze the goalies. So then it starts to take a look at the goaltenders. Every now and then it comes up with some errors, and you might have to filter through that and keep prompting it to move it in the right direction. Uh, but it's, yeah, so it did have a little bit of a problem with the goaltending, but it did give us a little bit of a breakdown in terms of what we can look for uh, for this upcoming week. Since it had a little bit of a problem with that, I just kind of prompted it and said, well, I know the data source, so it is in there. Why don't you go check again? And it basically did that. So now it's looking at the goaltenders and it's showing the stats for my goalies. Then it's showing the stats for his goalies. John Gibson's actually playing pretty well right now. Antti Ranta isn't. Uh, Montembeau's right in the middle. So then it gives you a comparison summary. So Gibson from your opponent's team has the best overall performance. He's also has a good number of wins. Montembeau shows solid performance with a slightly higher rating than Markstrom. My goalies have a higher goals against and lower save percentage compared to my opponents. That could be a potential area of concern in the upcoming matchup. Considering these insights, you might want to strategize around maximizing your strengths in the skater categories while being mindful of the goalie matchups. So it's basically saying what I th would have thought in the first place, which is, be mindful of the skater categories, but don't necessarily uh, fade, you know, don't worry too much about the goaltending, kind of fade goaltending because you're probably going to lose it anyway, at least until Vasilevsky comes back for me. So this isn't perfect. It's not necessarily everything that you would want, but it is going to give you some insights that you can then use to tailor your roster for each week or for certain situations. So hopefully this is going to be helpful to you. Uh, if it is, leave a comment in, in the uh, comments below. Uh, I'll be back with the weekly video tomorrow, and thank you again for watching.